The null space of A is the span of a single vector i, j, one, where I have to determine the values of i and j. This means we have to find a basis for the null space where the third component is equal to one. To find a basis for the null space, we solve the equation a times vector x equals zero. The vectors in the spanning set of the solution form a basis for the null space. The number of free variables will indicate how many vectors are in a basis. And since we're told a single vector spans a null space, we should only have one free variable. Let's set up the equation a times vector x equals a zero vector on the next slide. So again, here we have matrix A times vector X, which is the vector with components X1, X2, and X3, equals the zero vector. The next step is to write the augmented matrix, and then write the augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form. So for the augmented matrix, the first row is one, two, three, zero. The second row is one, negative three, negative one, zero. And the third row is two, negative one, two, zero. To write the augmented matrix in Reduce row echelon form, let's first get a zero in row two, column one, by replacing row two with negative one times row one plus row two. Let's also get a zero in row three, column one, by replacing row three with negative two times row one plus row three. Row one remains the same. And now replacing row two with negative one times row one plus row two, we have negative one times one plus one, that's zero. Next we have negative one times two plus negative three, that's negative five. Next we have negative one times three plus negative one, that's negative four. And negative one times zero plus zero is still zero. Now we replace row three with negative two times row one plus row three. We have negative two times one plus two, that's zero. Next we have negative two times two plus negative one, that's negative five. Next we have negative two times three plus two, that's negative six plus two or negative four. And then we have negative two times zero plus zero is zero. Notice row two and row three are the same. Let's replace row three with negative one times row two plus row three. Let's also multiply row two by negative one fifth to get a leading entry of one. Row one remains the same. Row two is going to be zero, one, four fifths, zero. Replacing row three with negative one times row two plus row three will give us a row of zeros. For the last step, let's get a zero in row one, column two, by replacing row one with negative two times row two plus row one. Row two and row three remain the same. Replacing row one with negative two times row two plus row one, we have negative two times zero plus one, that's one. Next we have negative two times one plus two is zero. We have negative two times four fifths, that's negative eight fifths plus three which is negative eight fifths plus 15 fifths, which is seven fifths. And negative two times zero plus zero is zero. We now have the augmented matrix in reduced row echelon form. Notice we have pivots in row one, column one, and row two, column two, which means x sub one and x sub two are basic variables. There's no pivot in column three, x sub three is a free variable. The first row indicates that x sub one plus seven fifths x sub three is equal to zero. The second row indicates that x sub two plus four fifths x sub three is equal to zero. x sub three is a free variable, x sub three equals x sub three. Next we solve the first equation for x sub one, which gives us x sub one equals negative seven fifths x sub three. Solving the second equation for x sub two, we have x sub two equals negative four fifths x sub three, and x sub three equals x sub three. Let's go ahead and parameterize the solution. Let's let x sub three equal t. If x sub three equals t, x sub one equals negative seven fifths t. 
x sub two equals negative four fifths t, and x sub three is equal to t. Which means the solutions to the equation a times vector x equals a zero vector are all the vectors x, where x sub one is equal to negative seven fifths t, x sub two is equal to negative four fifths t, and x sub three is equal to t. Factoring out the t, we have vector x is equal to t times the vector negative seven fifths, negative four fifths, and one. And now let's take this back to the previous slide. Since we now know the solution to a times vector x equals a zero vector, we know the vector in the spanning set, the vector negative seven fifths, negative four fifths, one, forms a basis for the null space, and therefore the vector negative seven fifths, negative four fifths, one, does span the null space of matrix A. And if we compare the vector we have here, notice how the third components are the same. They're both one, and therefore we know I must equal negative seven fifths, and J must equal negative four fifths. Any scalar multiple of this vector would span the null space of A, but again, we're told to find the specific vector where the third component is equal to one. I hope you found this helpful.